to y'all we come with a fun fact video listen listen this is for all the people who want who want to learn some shit look life not always about fun and games but sometimes you need to sit back and learn something y'all always trying to play around that's why that's why you ain't gonna get nowhere in life look because you gotta focus sometimes but let's go ahead and get to the video with new people do subscribers ah eating too many carrots can turn you orange you can take why the fuck he sound like that nigga said turn you on my bad it just turned it, 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 it took me out the moment it turned you on hold on, hold on. let me take it back take it back eating too many carrots can turn, turn you orange, orange. <laughs> What's you up? can taste garlic with your feet and sharks have been around for longer than trees have i knew that got your attention wait good if you're hungry for possible? more fascinating facts like those just stay tuned as there's plenty more where they came from to find out why a good night's sleep will instantly make you taller, or the reason you should never eat banana flavored candy near a beehive, sit back, get comfortable, and be prepared to be blown away that pop by some of the dry most incredible hell. facts that'll make you say, I had no idea. Okay! Hide me up. I'm excited, bro. I like learning shit, brother. Often the most interesting facts are the ones that subvert our expectations. Okay. And with that in mind, you might be surprised to learn that strawberries are not technically berries. That must be strawberries. Shocking, I know. The truth is, a berry is a very specific <laughs> classification. Okay. Not only must it have an outer skin and fleshy center, aka an exocarp and mesocarp, but internalized seeds too. Meaning that by this botanical definition, strawberries, which have external seeds, along with raspberries and blackberries, which are actually densely packed collections of dozens of smaller fruits, have been mm. lying to us this whole time. But I guess the question is, what fruits are berries? Yeah. Well, not only are blueberries and cranberries the real deal, but watermelons, grapes, eggplants, and even bananas are berries too. What? Sorry to say, but your whole life has been a very oh. big lie. What? Hang on, I'm In other fruity deceptions, did you know that despite their name, oranges aren't always orange? And I'm not just talking about unripe fruit. It certainly seems contradictory to the meaning of the word orange, seeing as how in English the color was in fact named after the fruit. Orange derives from the ancient Sanskrit word naranga, which naranga. referred to the orange tree specifically. Mm. But strangely, oranges can on occasion actually be green. Oranges contain chlorophyll, a green pigmented chemical which they use during photosynthesis. Uh -huh. And the amount of chlorophyll in an orange's skin is directly related to the amount and intensity of sunlight an orange is exposed to. In particularly hot climates, they'll produce excess chlorophyll as sun protection, uh, allowing them to redistribute sunlight's energy to avoid sun damage and dehydration, and causing the orange to become a shade of green. Not only are these green oranges safe to eat, but they're said to be even sweeter, despite mm, the misconception that they might have gone bad. Herman go wasn't lying me, when he said, It's not easy being green. Speaking of whom, we all know that Kermit is infamously romantically involved with Hollywood's hottest puppet, Miss Piggy. Shout out, shout but did out. Did you know that beneath Piggy's voluminous blonde blowout and turned up snout is actually none other than Yoda? Okay, admittedly, yeah. that might be a yeah. slight exaggeration, yeah. but let me explain. Frank Oz is an actor, director, and the original puppeteer behind not only Miss Piggy, but Yoda too. What? And while you may think the two characters could be more different, it seems Frank's voice didn't deviate too much between them. Take a listen. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say. Hmm? <laughs> Piggy, 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 don't, don't. Piggy, 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 Shit Miss Piggy down an octave or so, and you've pretty much got Yoda. All courtesy. This gonna sound so stupid, but I on, but on everything on my life, I never thought Yoda was a puppet. I don't, I don't know why it never even crossed my mind. Like if the talented <laughs> Wester Oz, I mean a voice that is both cosmically wise and capable of doing a pigified, that's a tough gig. Oddly enough, though, it's not just Miss Piggy that Yoda shares part of his existence with. The man responsible for Yoda's design, Stuart Freeborn, yeah. not only modeled Yoda on his own appearance, which, as you can see, is pretty evident, but one of the world's greatest intellects, too. Mm, no, not me, fine. but Einstein, on account of his wisdom and intelligence. 
And while I oh, wouldn't I want to it. liken Einstein to a little green man, you have to admit there's certainly a resemblance. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Which is the perfect segue into the next fact, which is all about uncanny resemblances. Mm -hmm. Did you know that when identical twins go out into the world and reproduce with their significant others, the twins' respective children are not only cousins, they can also technically, at least in the genetic sense, be siblings? No, before you ask, we're what? not taking a trip to Alabama here, but admittedly... Bro, bro, why do we always go for Alabama? Bro, we do not do that, bro. Bro, I'm tired of y'all, bro. Bro, I am sick of the... Bro, I am sick of the allegations. I don't know where this came from. I don't know why y'all chose, like, the state of Alabama. Nigga, we, like... We don't even, like, I don't know anybody who ever participated, like, maybe behind closed doors, but that could be in other states, too. But I ain't never in my life heard nothing like that. I don't know why everybody be saying that, bro. This outcome does require a very specific scenario. Y'all, Let's say that two identical twin sisters get into relationships with two identical twin brothers. Since all identical twins share 100% of the same DNA... The couple's resulting children would genetically be siblings. Pretty crazy, right? What? Even crazier. Here's a real hot take. I bet you didn't know you can taste garlic with your bare feet. Yep. How did Thanks so to Allison, the chemical responsible for garlic's pungent odor. Bro, like, see, some of these, some of these, like, facts we got to ask ourselves. Like, how do people, like, even find these things out? Like, how, like, how did somebody find this out? Like, rubbing a clove of garlic on your feet will result in the flavor of garlic passing through your skin, entering the bloodstream, and eventually causing the taste of garlic in your mouth. Which of course is pretty mind-blowing, but also perhaps the most useless fact ever. But good to know that wearing shoes filled with garlic definitely won't keep your breath fresh. You know, in case your crazy old aunt tries to tell you it will. Either way, it's clear the body is capable of a lot of impressive things. For instance, we're told to eat a varied and nutritious diet, but did yeah. you know it's technically possible for you to survive solely on just potatoes and butter? Yep, according to Catherine Bosbaum, a cardiovascular a dietitian, meal. while she strongly advises against it, there are a sufficient amount of macronutrients in potatoes and butter to allow the body to perform at a, quote, basic level. Nah, Needless to say, you eat. probably shouldn't be indulging in a diet of just buttery potatoes. That's but there is good. another healthier food that could have some very strange side effects if you consume it too often. Maybe. According to the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, if you chomp down on more than five large carrots a day for several weeks, your skin will gradually turn a shade of orange. How? Why? Sure, it sounds like the whimsies of a cartoon, but thanks to the increased orange pigmented beta carotene in your blood, which then gets stored under your skin, you can actually develop a condition known as keratinemia, where your skin turns slightly orange. Does that happen with black That people? said, if you too are a ghostly shade of white like me, then this might be a new and nutritious way uh. to achieve a golden glow. Speaking of diet, what you eat usually determines how often you'll pass gas. The average tutor toots around 50. I actually found that out, bro. When I when I start hitting the gym more and I start eating more, bro. Like, and then it also like makes your farts stink way worse, my nigga. Like, nigga, when I fart now, bro, my farts smell like a fucking death. Like, bro, but like when I don't eat, like, like it's like a little smooth Passover. But nigga, oh my god, especially if you have like a protein shake. Nigga, it's a wrap. <laughs> Into today, rap. with some even doing as many as 40. 40. Finally, something I'm above average at. To put that into perspective, in just one day, on average, you will fart out enough gas to fill up an entire balloon. Nigga, and what? About 20 balloons if you've had a Taco Bell. <laughs> hey, let's not talk about that too loudly. As you might hear in big work underway on Pixar's latest cash grab sequel. Coming this summer, this up to... Carl versus Crunch Rap Supreme. Uh. With a churning gut in mind, did you know that your stomach acid is so potent that it can actually dissolve metal? Primarily, stomach acid consists of hydrochloric acid and other digestive enzymes, which, with prolonged. How does, like, and, and another thing, bro, how does that not, like, burn through, like, our shit, though? I, like, like, uh, I, I don't Exposure are literally capable of breaking down metals. 
Worse yet, if stomach acids were to come into contact with your skin, it would almost instantaneously cause chemical burns. But wait, if stomach acid is so strong, then how is it contained within the stomach without causing damage? Well, for that, we can thank the epithelial cells lining the stomach walls. These little heroes constantly produce a thick layer of mucus that acts as a protective barrier between the stomach and its right, acid. Move past it. Alongside regular secretions of biocarbonate, which helps neutralize the acid, this ultimate team keeps your body from becoming its own dinner. Okay, okay. Move. So while mucus and acid may be essential parts of your stomach's functionality, you probably wouldn't want to find the stuff in your bed, right? Well, I'm afraid to say, a ton of bodily fluids are probably festering in your own mattress as we speak. I'm already knowing by that. some estimations, over the course of 10 years, your mattress may increase in weight by anywhere between 10 and 100% due to accumulating bodily debris. I ain't gonna as lie. gross as it sounds, if you it's got not 100% all that hard to believe when you, you consider your mattress essentially <laughs> soaks up sweat, dead skin cells, dandruff, mold, and even mites. Not to mention anything else that may get spilled in bed over the years, you filthy animals. Don't eat in your beds, bro. As scary as a sweaty, moldy mattress may be, I guarantee Teratomas will give you an even bigger break. What are they? I hear you ask. I mean, what is well, they're rare tumors which themselves can grow bones, hair, and even teeth. Terrifyingly, there have even been cases of teratomas containing brain matter and eyeball tissue, Bro, what the despite fuck? being located nowhere near the person's head. My nigga, the exact what? cause of teratomas isn't fully understood yet, though they're thought to occur due to defects in the types of cells found in embryos that change form to suit different purposes. These cells are ordinarily used by the embryo to form fat, Bro, muscles, teeth, nails, hair, up. and so on. That's why teratomas are able to grow their own. Now, these bizarre tumors are not necessarily always cancerous, but the thought of a hairy tooth teratoma lurking around your body is Chill disturbing out. nonetheless. Bro, what the f You'll be pleased to know, however, that I do have some body facts for you that aren't quite so unsettling. Thank you, buddy. For example, did you know you're actually taller in the morning than you are in the evening? I actually did Okay, so it's a very slight difference. However, orthopedic surgeon Dr. Ankit Batra claims that we have gravity to thank for this. Throughout the day, gravity slowly takes a toll on the spine as it compresses its discs. Mm -hmm. By the day's end, your spine will have compressed enough that you'll actually appear slightly shorter, typically by about half an inch. But don't panic. While you sleep, your rested body will allow your spine to decompress, meaning you can rise and shine Damn, at your very tallest. <laughs> Similar Why to you this, your body also has some wonderful length-related synchronicities. For instance, if you hold your arms apart, the total length spanning from your left to right fingertips is roughly equal to your overall height. So if you're a tasty 6 foot 11 like me, then your wingspan should measure around 6 foot 11 as well. Okay. Similarly, you'll find that your foot size is about the same length as your forearm. And you know what they say about big feet, right? Big arms. Wait a minute. Talking of arms, our soft body buddies my in the center of the world, big, octopuses, not only have eight arms, or rather tentacles, but nine brains too. I knew that. Yep. In addition to one big central brain, they essentially have a mini brain in each of their eight tentacles, which allows the tentacles to behave autonomously as they touch, taste, and move Can without specific too? control from the central brain. Octopuses really are earthbound aliens. In addition to this, they have not one, not two, but three hearts. One of them pumps blood around the body, while the other two pump blood to their gills. Oh, and FYI, in case octopi weren't weird enough, their blood is blue, thanks to a it. protein called hemocyanin, which contains copper as opposed to the iron found in mammal blood. See, I'll be studying. Nevertheless, I'll be with all attention. these brains and hearts, it Pages doesn't look class. like the Wizard of Oz will be having a visit from an octopus anytime soon. What the and while octopuses might have nine brains, did you know that our one human brain isn't even fully developed until the age of 25? Yeah. You see, brain development begins from the back and works forward, meaning the frontal lobes are the last to develop. 
As a result, under-25s may be less skilled at the planning and reasoning that area is responsible for. Mm. I'm definitely over 25, though, so I'm not exactly sure what my excuse is. Anyway, here's another fun, albeit gross, animal fact for you. Did you know that giraffes drink each other's urine? Well... Why the fuck you got the picture? Why this nigga got the picture? Why this nigga... Why, why, why did I pause right here? That's the real question. Why did I pause? Like, why... When I saw this, my brain said, this is the perfect time to pause. That's, that's what we need to talk about. And why... This some R. Kelly ass shit, man. And that nigga, like, he not even drink. Nigga got the tongue out. Ah, like, nigga, damn. Like. Well, specifically, the males drink the urine of females. I mean, just look at this. Oh, you go. fuck. Nigga, you fucking. <laughs> look at that nigga's face. Bruh. Ain't nothing. Bruh, that shit was so good. But that's the strongest, bro. Why his face look like that, bro? That's the strongest pisses. Wait, bro. What? What was the sentence that was about to come out of my mouth? I'm pretty sure that's the strongest piss he ever tastes. What type of sentence is that? Look, look. What the? Why are you moving like that? <laughs> was it nasty, my nigga? Like, I mean. I mean, I'm and no, it's not just because men are gross. We're not here to kink shame. It actually I'm serves saving. a purpose in the species' survival. Essentially, an interested male will purposefully headbutt the female's bladder to encourage her pee. After having a tipple of the tinkle, he'll then be able to determine whether or not she's ovulating. If the pee's got that extra kick to it, then it's time to churn some butter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's move on. But what the fuck? Here's a question. You ever stuck your head in a cow's mouth? No. Hopefully not, as I can tell you from first-hand experience, it doesn't end well. You don't? However, if you did, you'd find that cows actually have no top teeth at the front of their mouths. Instead, what appears to be just squidgy gums is actually a tough dental pad that allows for some serious grass grinding action. Ready to send the mush material back to the molars. And speaking of animal teeth, if you had to guess, how much do you reckon an elephant tooth weighs? For context, a human tooth can Let me weigh... Guess. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess. Uh, elephant, elephant's pretty big. Um, I, I'm gonna say... Maybe five to ten pounds? Is that crazy? Up to around 2.28 grams. Damn. Which is pretty puny when you consider that an elephant tooth can weigh in at a beastly nine pounds. Ooh, yeah, look at me. that's heavier than a typical look newborn at me. human baby. Oh my you God. You need a jackhammer to perform a root canal on one of these bad boys. Damn. While elephants might be the largest land animals, the world's largest animal is, of course, the blue whale. Okay. As a matter of fact, this creature is so hefty that some of its arteries are big enough for a small child to wiggle through, with the aorta being nine inches wide. That's pretty mind-boggling when you look at your own veins and consider how tiny they are. Sticking to the theme of sizable animals, I bet you didn't know that penguins actually used to be taller than humans. What? Yep, an extinct breed of penguin that lived around 37 million years if ago. If I ever saw a nigga look at me like this, boy, I, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. If them niggas were still around, bro, and that nigga like seven, six feet tall, nigga, I'm gone piss, my nigga. Cause God, cause look, let's be honest, bro. God, how you gonna get this nigga height? This nigga don't even need it, bro. What, what he, bro, what he need to be six, seven for, my nigga? Like, come on, bro. Like, I'll be pissed as fuck. Like, like imagine all the niggas that want to go to the NBA. And them, and them niggas just 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, like, them niggas pissed. Like, nigga, nigga gave all... God gave all the height to the penguins. Like, nigga, what? To go named the Colossus Penguin is believed to have stood at a mighty 7 feet tall. Nigga, 7 feet! By comparison, today's tallest penguin, the Emperor, peaks at just over 4 feet. I mean, seven. I wanted to advocate animal extinction, but I'm kind of glad about this one. There's something Seven very creepy beats? about the idea of giant penguins. I was just playing. I was just playing about being six, seven. He, he didn't even say six. Nigga said seven feet. Look at y'all know how tall seven feet is, my nigga. Seven feet. Hell no, nah, that nigga getting shot down, God. Round That's one, a grown man. That's one. a man. Speaking of extinction, one animal which has certainly triumphed over this elimination risk is the shark. As a matter mm. of fact, sharks are actually older than trees. 
While that seems unfathomable, according to London's Natural History Museum, the earliest shark fossil dates back to 450 million years ago. That is wild. Compare that with trees which are thought to have emerged 380 million years ago, and you can see how sharks really are the original gangster. While trees aren't quite as old as sharks, they are older than rot. What I mean by this is that until around 300 million years ago, the organisms that decompose wood hadn't yet evolved, meaning that when trees died, they didn't rot. Instead, they would simply remain lying where they fell, eventually being compressed into the ground where they would be pressurized for millions of years, resulting in the formation of coal. Wow. When this age of non-decaying trees came to an end, it meant most trees would rot away before they could form coal. That's why coal is a non-renewable energy source today, as the vast majority of it was formed during that decayless I golden age. I didn't even know but that. of course, coal isn't the only precious thing to be found inside the Earth. Our home planet is full of gold. Oh yeah, I'm It's right. estimated that 99% of the gold atoms on Earth are actually lurking inside the Earth's core, having been pulled in way back when the Earth's surface was still molten that's magma. That's good, that's good, that's good. What's more, there's so much gold in there that there's actually enough to cover the entire surface of the Earth in one and a half feet of the stuff. What? Man, imagine covering the world knee-deep in gold. I'd really show the aliens how we do things here on Nigga, Earth. Woo, boy, woo. Speaking of life on Earth, here's a fact that'll really put your existence into perspective. We currently live closer in time to the Tyrannosaurus Rex than the Tyrannosaurus Rex did to the Stegosaurus. Only 65 million years separate us from the T-Rex, while 83 million years separated the T-Rex from the Stegosaurus. It wasn't around this, like, like, hold on, it was around the same time, I think it? I, I want, like, I thought all the dinosaurs was just, like, you know, like, around the same time. Bro, it's so, like, one thing that I always think about, bro, we can have a deep conversation, bro, real quick. Like, one thing I think about, like, what was the first thing, bro? Because, like, how, like, what comes from nothing, my nigga? Like, how do you have nothing? Like, something came from, like, you feel me? Like, to in order to get something, something had to be there. Like, for, for me to... Like I don't, I don't know, my like it, it like it blows my mind because like, like it we talk about oh this came before this but what became what what came of that and came of that what came first that's what I what that's what I need to know what came first because like my mind it, it can't it can't that's hey that's why I believe bro you gotta believe in God there's no way even weirder there's than no that way. trilobites which are an extinct group of marine arthropods Thank not God. only existed before dinosaurs that's some roaches. but had gone extinct and even fossilized by the time dinosaurs showed up to the party mm. considering that humans have only been around some three hundred thousand years and will each live for about seventy seven point two years on average wow really proves how cosmically insignificant we all are only seventy seven in fact years? if you weren't already having an existential crisis try this on for size if all the empty space inside the atoms that make us up was suddenly removed we'd each be able to fit into a particle of dust more shockingly the entire human race would form the size of about a sugar cube and if i had to guess i'd imagine it would feel something similar to being on the subway existential crisis over want to hear a fun fact about be amazed I yeah. currently have a little over 11 and a half million subscribers. Shout out, shout out, shout and out. And I have roughly the same amount of amazing people subscribing to my channel as the population of Belgium. Mm. I think we can do even better than that. So make sure to subscribe and then let's continue That's a crazy this bar. fantastic fun fact community. Shout out. Cool. Now let's get back to the video. If it was possible for cars to drive upwards into the sky, mm -hmm. how long do you think it'd take to reach outer space? You might assume it... Let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Seven hours, seven hours. Whoa, shit. Seven hours. I'm Take saying. forever, but considering space begins only around 60 miles up at a constant speed of just 60 miles per hour, you'd reach outer space in one speedy hour. What? I mean, just compare that with the fact that a typical <laughs> commercial flight travels what? at a speed of around 500 miles per hour and takes more than five hours to get from L.A. to New York. That do make Holiday sense. in outer space doesn't seem all that far away. Never in my life. But back down to Earth now, and some countries have some pretty interesting things going on. Okay. Like, for example, did you know that in Russia, rich people have been known to hire out fake ambulances? 
Or rather, ambulance taxis. Why? Yep, according to Insider, wealthy Moscow residents have been known to hire these siren-blasting ambulance replicas for $200 an hour as a way to pass right through traffic. That is smart as fuck. Oh my god. Nigga, I wouldn't... Bro, you know what, though? Some, some always told me... Like, 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 I was like, y'all, y'all know how the MLS, like, sometimes, like, the lights just randomly come on. I'd be like, bruh, they just trying to get through traffic. But now, now that he say that, nigga, my theory has came correct. My nigga, I, I, I knew something was, was off about ambulances, my nigga. Hey. Well, unethical and, of course, illegal, there's I, no I denying knew. that this crafty idea is the perfect crime. I mean, who's going to stop and question an ambulance when it could well be tending to an emergency? That is true. But enough about the never-ending awfulness of the super-rich. Let's move over to Japan, where we find the Naki Sumo Crying Baby Festival. The 400-year-strong annual tradition sees sumo wrestlers holding random people's babies and trying to make them cry. As bizarre as this sounds, the traditional belief is that if the sumo can make the baby cry, then the baby's cries will ward off evil spirits and demons, therefore meaning it'll grow to be healthy and strong. Makes perfect sense. Speaking of wrestlers, judging, I bet you judging. didn't know that Abraham Lincoln was actually an elite wrestling champion before becoming president. Really? Okay, so not quite in the WWE sense, but nevertheless a wrestler. In fact, over 12 years, Lincoln reportedly amassed over 300 victories and lost only one match. Damn! I mean, a president that can pass important legislation like that? and destroy his adversaries in a cage match? Now, that's someone who... Nigga died to a bullet! Another world that's leader tough. with quite the unorthodox background is Pope Francis. It's hard to imagine the Pope leading a normal life. However, the now 86-year-old actually revealed that back in his native country of Argentina, he used to work as a bouncer. Of course, this was likely in his youth, so we'll what? currently have to depend on Photoshop for images of the Pope Meister working the door. But still, it's that. pretty hilarious to think that the head of the Catholic Church was once asking for people's IDs and he breaking like up Trump like He like he was He really has done God's work. Moving on, do you know why we say the phrase, raise a toast? Well, it's actually said to date back to the ancient Romans and is way more literal than you may think. Mm. Back in their day, the wine Romans drank was often poor quality. So folks would regularly toss a chunk of toasted bread into it to soak up some of the bitter sediments and make it more palatable. Meaning sad. they would quite literally <laughs> raise a toast when there was something to raise a drink to. That the perfect sad. fact to bore people with at your next dinner party. Something else that's pretty astonishing to think about is that today, every two minutes, there are more photos taken than in the entire 19th century. Mm -hmm. Of course, cameras were new and hard to use back then, and people didn't have one in their pocket at all times like we do nowadays. Exactly. Even so, it's estimated that an astounding 5 billion photos are taken every day now. Every day? But while technology undeniably has many benefits, I mean... Now else, when I see countless pictures of Sarah from Accounting's cat, it does unfortunately come with its downfalls. Oh, Allow me to introduce you to Gary Crimmett. Oh. Gary is the founder of the popular online dating site Match.com. But in of course your ass is, but look at you. An extremely unlucky yet incredibly ironic twist of fate, Gary lost his own girlfriend to a guy she met on Match.com. Oh, hey. You might be thinking Gary was heartbroken and cursed the day he ever created Match.com, but that's where you'd be wrong. What? He was actually rather pleased. Yep, despite losing the woman you'd assume to be the love of his life, Gary looked on the bright side and considered the whole ordeal to be a testament to his business. What? Yikes. Some people really are married to their work. Even more extreme, Ed no Hedrick, use. often referred to as the father of the Frisbee, had a dying wish for his ash remains to be made into a Frisbee. Rather disturbingly, his hope was that his family would gleefully play with him and toss him around the park, and indeed, his wish was ultimately granted. Talk about a work hard, play hard attitude. It's the magical modern fairy tale of the man who turned into a Frisbee. Hardwarming. Sticking with the theme of jobs, did you know that in the 1870s, the city of Liege in Belgium decided to employ cats as mailmen? Yeah, you heard that right. After training what? 37 of them, they sent them on their merry way with newspapers attached to them. Oh. And it went about as well as you would imagine. The quickest oh. delivery time was about five hours, though most of them took all day. Afraid to oh. say, Lord Fluffington didn't get employee of the month. That's fire! 
Okay, so we know animals aren't always the best employees, but did you know they can actually keep pets of their own? Weirdly, the Texas screech owl has been observed numerous times taking blind snakes home to their nests. Not to eat, however, but to keep alive as something like a pet, which seems to be for the purpose of eating small bugs and parasites that make their way in. It seems strange a skilled predator such as an owl would show mercy to the blind snake, but then again, who could say no to that adorable fish? Mm. That said, perhaps the most adorable fact I've heard is that baby elephants can laugh. As a species, elephants frequently what? engage in playful behavior with one another, and it's been observed that when doing so, baby elephants may produce a specific sound we'd liken to laughter. And not just elephants either, but rats too. Lab scientists have found that when engaging in rough play or even being tickled, rats will let out a little giggle. A specific high-pitched squeak which isn't emitted in any other circumstances except mm. joyful and playful moments. Y'all look at them. Now, now this got me thinking, bro. Like, what if everything has a consciousness, though? Like, but like, you know, maybe not as strong or, like, powerful as ours. But, you know, like, like... Like, I feel, I feel it's like one of those, like, people who be like, don't kill, don't kill cows and shit. But I'm just saying, bro, like, like, cow, cows got emotions and shit too, man. Like, 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 I don't know, bro. Like, this just got me thinking, like, like, nigga, like, I don't know, bro. It got me thinking deep. Like, nigga, we can't do nothing for real, for real. Like, that's tough. That's kind of sad. Like, cause like when I see a rat, nigga, that nigga's dying. I mean, I'm, like even though I'm saying all this, that if I see a rat today, that hoe is dying. Like, so I'm talking, but I could click off this video right now, and I, if I see a rat just run across my room, that hoe's getting blasted like a mother. I'm, Poo! Like, nigga, I won't even think twice about it. But it just. Moving on to something less adorable, I bet you didn't know that the smell of freshly cut grass is actually just the grass screaming in distress as a result of essentially being decapitated. It's like the little... While not literally screaming in an audible way, it's, like... it's the plant equivalent of screaming. The scent of cut grass comes from organic compounds known as green leaf volatiles, uh -huh. which grasses release as an announcement that they're under attack. This allows neighboring parts of the plant network to start acting accordingly. Some of these compounds stimulate the formation of new cells or act as antibiotics against bacteria or fungi at the wound site. Fascinatingly, when some non-grass species of plants experience similar damage when nibbled by little critters, they emit pheromones that can attract predatory insects to eat the smaller bugs that typically try to eat the plants. What? It's basically the plant equivalent of a dinner bell. In other plant pheromone fact news, there's a chemical compound found in bananas and banana-flavored candy known as isoamyl acetate, that is also used in a pheromone that honeybees use as an attack signal. Meaning that if you go near a beehive whilst chomping on a banana, it will quite literally send the bees bananas. What? Now for a little bit of geography. Uh -huh. Looking at a map, it initially seems like the US and Russia are pretty darn far apart. However, remembering that the Earth is spherical, sorry flat earthers, it turns out Russia is actually only 2.4 miles away from the U.S. What? How? Well, it comes down to America's little Canada-adjacent home away from home, Alaska. Between Russia and Alaska, there are two islands in the Bering Strait known as the Diomede Islands, one of which is owned by Russia and the other owned by the U.S. Mm. At their narrowest point, the islands are separated by only two miles of water. That Who'd have thought that Russia and the U.S. were such close neighbors? Oh, this nigga! In other crazy geographical news, America's Appalachian Mountains, the Scottish Highlands, and North Africa's Atlas Mountains are actually originally all from the same mountain range. This mind-bending uh, fact is possible because millions and millions of years ago, before human or even dinosaur life existed, Earth was home to one enormous supercontinent named Pangaea. That's Much of our understanding tough. of this emerges from the fact that a lot of the continents, such as South America and Africa, seem to effortlessly fit together, as well as the distribution of similar Before fossilized that, okay. remains across those connecting regions. Over the millennia, Pangaea gradually split apart as a result of tectonic plate movement, with vast tracts being submerged underwater. But at one time, the mountains found in the Appalachians, Scottish Highlands, and the Atlas Mountains were indeed all connected as one landmass. Bro, how do y'all think that looked, though? That shit had to be beautiful, y'all. Like, just imagine that. Like, like, oh my god, imagine taking your girl out to Pangea. Like, babe, look, 
Hey, I'm saying, God, I'm gonna tell you something special. Hey, look, people ain't been here in millions. Shit, fuck that, billions, trillions of years. That's fine. That's that's tough. While we're in the Scottish How Highlands, let's head south to England a moment for a surprising language factoid. Did you know that England isn't even in the top five list of countries with citizens who speak English by population? Yeah. As a result of the British Empire, ex-colonies with larger populations actually top the list. Namely, the USA, India, Pakistan, the Philippines, and Nigeria. Mm. England, meanwhile, are slacking behind in sixth place. But while we're talking about nations, did you know that the colors of the Olympic rings were selected very specifically? No. To jog your memory, they're blue, yellow, black, green, and red. Yeah. The reason being that at least one of these colors, including the white background of the flag, features on every one of the flags of the participating nations. That is tough. Not only that, but the five rings also represent the five inhabited continental land masses. Africa, America, Asia, Europe, and Australia. Okay. Meaning the Olympic flag basically represents the whole world. Mm. And it's not just the Olympic flag that holds secrets in its design. Ever wondered why the F and J keys on a keyboard have little ridges on them? Well, believe it or not, they're actually there so that typists can align their fingers without even looking at the keyboard. What? Pretty neat, I didn't huh? even know that. Something else you probably don't know the purpose of is that tiny handle on maple syrup bottles. Well, while the tiny little land handle might seem useless now, yeah. it actually derives from a time when maple syrup came in huge five-pound ceramic bottles and therefore needed handles to be carried. As maple syrup transitioned into being stored in smaller glass bottles, the handle was retained as a nod to the classic maple syrup wow. containers, albeit much, much smaller. That's tough. And now, for a slightly less whimsical change of pace, here's a not-so-fun fact about death. Slightly unnervingly, when you die, it's believed that your hearing is the last sense to go. I heard no In a 2020 that. study, researchers found that, quote, actively dying patients' brain... Bro, like, imagine, like, dying, bro, and, like, like say, like, you got, like, died to, like, some bush, and, like, the last thing you hear is, like, bitch ass, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, they just, oh, like, like, say, like, you got murdered, bro, and, like, the person's talking shit, bro. I like they like like they doing a Fortnite dances like like they just doing your ass like da -da 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 -da. but I'd be sick as oh my god but I hunt the fuck out that person on me. Where most functions had ceased were still active in response to sound. That's crazy. Can you imagine what that must be like? The lights going out, the senses of touch, taste, and smell departing you, leaving you only with the fading sounds of what's around you. It's a pretty eerie thought. Now, of course, there's a big difference between hearing sounds and actually understanding them. So it's unclear whether dying people can make sense of the sounds around them in their last moments. Mm. But just in case, please make sure to blast Highway to Hell in my final moments. I'm going yeah. out in style. Hell yeah, no. Play some gospel. And with that, I bid you farewell. Play some gospel, baby. I enjoyed the video. Oh, if you learned anything, let me know what y'all learned. If y'all learned anything, and let me know if you enjoyed the video. I love y'all. Stay safe. Always be on the on the search for new knowledge, and I'll see y'all boys and girls next video. We out. Ugh.